I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my everyday life living in Leon, Nicaragua. A few months ago, Paul Baker, the singing monk, was on the show, and uh, we did an interview from Managua, and there's a lot we didn't get to do. We ran out of time, and there's just a lot of his story uh, that's worth telling, and we still have more to do, but today uh, I had a chance for him to come out uh, to my studio and perform some of the music that he's really passionate about, some of his own, uh, and uh, especially music of of uh, Victor Hara. And so um, this is kind of a special episode uh, that we wanted to bring more of his story and more of his passion and his projects uh, and things to you. But I'm going to let basically this episode is going to be in his words. Uh, so we had an opportunity for him to just come out and hang out in the studio and he's got a bunch of material for you. And we have more after this as well, but you know, we're going to spread it out and do it at different times. So um, let's bring him into the studio and let him um, sing and tell you about the music and his projects uh, and a little bit about his life right after the bump. Victor, this song is called, uh, the, in English, The Worker is No Fool. And originally in Spanish it's called El Hombre es un Creador. And um, what's really fun about it is that they, in the recording that Victor Jara made, he's got this kind of buzzing. And in his day, they did that with paper and comb. Because in those days, um, toilet paper was kind of scratchy and hard, right? So you could put it up against the comb and you could blow through it and get that buzzing sound. Well, we don't have that kind of toilet paper any longer. But what we do have is this high-tech version of the paper and cone, which is called a kazoo, which I'm firmly convinced this is the, the only kazoo in the whole of Latin America. Everybody says, what the heck is that? Anyway, this is what it sounds like. And it's an example of the work that I've been doing in terms of producing uh, songs mostly Victor Jara in both Spanish, which is his, of course, that he produced that, but also English to sing. And so this is one of the best, better versions in English. So without any more ado, we shall try it out with our kazoo and our bilingual version of El Hombre es un Creador. Uh, the working person is no fool. Igualito que otro tanto de niño aprendí a sudar No conocí las escuelas ni supe lo que es jugar Me sacaban de la cama por la mañana temprano Y al laito mi papá fui creciendo en el trabajo Like so many other children, I learned early to sweat and toil. Never had the time to play, to see the inside of the school. They dragged me from the bedclothes way before dawn each day. And I grew up a working hand alongside my old man. Con mi pura pilera, me la di de capentero, de estucador y albanil. De gasfitor y tornero Pucha que sería bueno haber tenido instrucción Porque de todo el elemento el hombre es un creador Well, I turned out pretty handy I can cut and shape a plank Build walls, slap on the plaster Fix your car or plug your tank It would have been quite useful To have had some time in school no matter what his tools may be, the working man's no fool. I can throw 
you up a house I can roll you out a road Make wine that'll knock your socks off Keep a factory on full load I go down the darkest mines Climb the highest peaks Stroll among the stars And the cob the furrows deep And Levanto una casa, le construyo un camino, le pongo sabor al vino, le saco mito a la fábrica, voy al fondo de la tierra, conquisto la altura, camino por las estrellas y hago sur con espesor. Well, I quickly learned the language of Bonabos and Patron, they killed me over and over for daring to sing my song but I pick myself back up each time helped by the hands of others for I know I'm not alone now there are so many of us Aprendí el vocabulario del amo de un patrón. Me mataron tantas veces por levantarles la voz, pero del suelo me paro porque me prestan la mano. Porque ahora no estoy solo, porque ahora somos tantos. <tose> Bueno, so that's one of, I think, one of the better translations. Or uh, uh, maybe I could show people this. It's quite hard to see, really. Um, this is actually a songbook of these. Victor has some best love songs, really. Um, Te recuerdo manda ni chicha ni limonada, so on and so on. Um, this is just a very rough original copy. This isn't the finished thing at all. But it, it, what's intriguing, well, the various things about, it's intriguing about it, first and foremost, it's a songbook with the, the lyrics, both in Spanish, the original Spanish, uh, and the English versions interwoven. But the miracle of modern technology is that I've made it online. And so the links to the songs, which aren't actually in this copy, there would be a link here for this song, for example. Uh, those you click on and you actually get the recording. So it's not only a songbook, but it's also an album. You don't have to, like, you know, you think, well, what am I going to do, make a CD? But who's got a CD player? You don't need to. There it is. And if you print it out, then all you have to do is to focus your phone on the QR code and you get the song in your in your phone. It's astonishing. I, I won't go on about it, but it's called Pense Oir al Dulce Victor En la Noche Cantar. I thought I heard Sweet Victor singing. And it was a song that came to me in Victor Jara's own garden in Chile when, after he'd been killed, I was there working with Joan Jara, his wife, and in Tilimani, in Tilimani and Kilapayun and other people, the great uh, Chilean groups, to on events to reclaim the stadia where uh, so many 3,000 people had been tortured and, and many of them murdered, particularly in the little stadium, as it was called, Chile Stadium, which is Estadio Chile, which is now Estadio Victor Jara, where he was tortured and murdered. And in the garden, kind of where we are like here, Joan lent me Victor's guitar, his own guitar. I mean, imagine such an honor. And having played it, it was, a, a, a line of this song came out of, this, out of the stillness of the night. I thought I heard sweet Victor singing. And later on, I made a Spanish translation, and we've recorded it, and so on and so on. But that's where this comes from, and it's essentially sparked by that incident. Um, these, I don't like to call them translations, because that's too literal a word. Interpretations into English kind of flowered within me, and um, 
So this little book is about all of that. Um, I won't sing the entire song, and I'll do it in English. I, I thought I heard Sweet Victor singing, but this is what I first heard. Victor was a worker. He loved his people so. Sang and laughed and labored. Watched their spirit grow. But our free world crushed his chill Killed Victor in its spite. Yet I thought I heard sweet Victor singing in the night. Don't give up, oh, don't give up. Don't give up the struggle now. Keep on singing out for justice. Don't give up the struggle. was in the cold, dark stadium They swore they'd beat him down They broke his wrists and fingers Saying, sing now if you can But his song, his love, his courage No pin nor shade could find And I thought I heard a sweet victor Don't give up, oh, don't give up Don't give up the struggle now Keep on singing out for justice Don't give up the struggle now When the pequeño pajaritos Vola cantar, volar el sol en la madrugada. <laughs> la bebita en libertad. I'm sorry, I'm doing it in Spanish. So I heard the young birds flutter as they flew from tree to tree. Saw the sun rise in the morning. Heard the baby running free. Saw the beauty and the glory, felt the whisper of the night. And I'm sure I heard a sweet Victor singing. So... Um, one of the things, one of the musics I still like to sing, having been a, a monk and a, um, indeed a hermit for the first part of my monk monkery, um, is a Gregorian chant. Not an extenso, not, you know, going on and on. But there's one piece we used to sing in the monastery during Good Friday, the ceremony of Good Friday. Um, where in the Catholic tradition, and, and I think wider Christian tradition too, um, Christ is dead. He's been murdered, nailed to the cross, and at you know, three o'clock on Friday afternoon, I'm not sure who had a chrono chronometer in those days, but anyway, that's the tradition. And um, so, we monks made a real, you know, meal of all of this stuff, of course. And so we were singing these really mournful songs and mournful chants. Oh, my people, what have I done that you should treat me so, use me so, and so forth and so on. Because uh, this was the day that he was murdered and there were still a couple of days to go before the resurrection, okay. So everything was very gloomy. All the monks were like lying prone on the ground and uh, so on and so on. It was all extremely, extremely grim. And then suddenly two of us would stand up and usually I was one of them. And uh, we would stand up and we would in the midst of that mourning 
and despair, we would sing a, a chant of resurrection. And it's only since coming to Latin America that I've really understood what it means. Living in a barrio popular in Managua, as I do, you realize that there's this tremendous spirit of hope in the midst of despair, in the midst of the most difficult times. We're, for example, in Nicaragua, we're one of the countries, apart from all the other things that have been done to Nicaragua over the centuries, uh, we're one of the countries that is suffering most profoundly and viciously by the effects of climate um, crisis. Really, we've done nothing to provoke. Uh, it's, it says, how would you say, it's it, radical injustice with knobs on, uh, added on to all of the other injustices that we've suffered for so long. And so the situation is not good. But I, actually I come originally from Britain and I remember, I don't remember the war, <laughs> the, like the Second World War. I, I vaguely remember it because I was a little baby and they were trying to bomb me as soon as I got born. The, the Nazis started bombing Britain and they particularly they chose the, the Lon London where I happened to be living with my mom and dad, of course. Um, that was just a little, tiny little thing. And um, so it, it's um, quite remarkable that we find that same spirit of the Blitz, as we called it, where all of these tremendous... Mom and Dad always used to say, in so many ways, although we were getting bombed every night and so many people died and our own house got knocked around, um, the times of the war, the Blitz, was one of the best times because people stuck together, made community, and we had a lot of laughs. And this is the experience of living in the Barrio Popular. And for me, then, it, it makes sense of this song, this song of joy in the, or resurrection of life in the midst of death. And I, I'll just sing it. It's in Latin. It's, it's, is it Latin or Greek? It's in Greek. And it means, though, holy God, strong God, immortal God, have mercy on us. And it's not, it's not this guy up here, it's the guy on the cross, right? And th that's, you know, the, that essence of hope, that we put our trust and our hope in one another, the human, not in the you know, whatever, you know, the harder to discern, shall we say, the love that we share as human beings. So, I should have been a preacher rather than a silent monk. I'm, I'm making up for ten years of having to keep my mouth shut, so... Hagios Oteos. Holy God, strong God, immortal God, have mercy on us. Hagios Oteos. Hagios Iskiros Agios Atanataos So we had a nice, nice counterpoint of birds this time. Okay. This is a song my mum used to sing to us. And it's called the Eriske Love Lilt. And it's, it's uh, Scotland, has, it's like Nicaragua, land of not volcanoes, but mountains and lakes. And um, <coughs> we call them lochs. And uh, there are many islands. And one of them is called Isla. And another Jura, to the west of Scotland to the the Hebrides or thereabouts and um, this little song comes from there it's it's um, originally in in Gaelic which or Gaelic rather which I don't speak uh, and um, but it's so beautiful and it's really just a guy 
presumably a fisher guy saying to his love um, you know you are the harp of my joy and that's clear that's it it's a lullaby okay so it's very gentle and I like to now you sh uh, share it in honor of all the indigenous peoples of the world not just um, in Scotland or Nicaragua but indigenous peoples all over because they are the roots of the healing we have to achieve to survive as the whole heat ramps up When I'm lonely, dear white heart, dark the night and wild the sea, by love's light my foot finds the old pathway tells you. But the sing. Harp of joy, oh, cross my queen. Moon of guidance by night. Strength and light are thou to me. Bear me Hey, hi. That's terrific. Thank you. Dear. So, um, just uh, 
you know, I've been having problems with my hands and nails and things like that. We guitarists love singers, I think, rather than guitarists love excuses. But it's worth noting the guitar itself. Uh, I'm talking. <laughs> talking so yeah, this yeah. this is a person. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so it's worth um, noting the guitar itself. It's actually made out of garbage. Uh, the neck is a. Uh, let me show. Neck is was originally a table leg. Uh, the back was originally a tree that was rotting and had to be felled. The sides were from chapel flooring, and when I say chapel, I was, a, uh, I, as I pointed out, uh, a monk for a long time, and, and we were presumably uh, building a new chapel. So there were these offcuts. And then the face is actually um, an old drawer, an old desk drawer. And the pièce de résistance, the, you know, the, the real top of the tree, is the capo, and this little guy here, I'm not sure if I can it in the middle. It seems to have solidified itself. Let's see. The capo is the thing that you can raise and lower the pitch of the guitar. If you can actually, you know, well, I can't get it off at the moment. There it is. It's actually made out of a toilet seat. And so I reduced an entire toilet seat to this size. So it shows, shows you what kind of a, a carpenter I was. Um, the, the important thing about it, really, though, is this was ages and ages ago. It's over 50 years old now, this guitar. And I, I used to play flamenco. I won't inflict it on you at the moment because uh, all those excuses. But just to get an idea of the sound. of garbage that's not too bad and the great the most important thing about it really is that it's um, in making it I learned how to do a bit of carpentry uh, but also um, more importantly the wood you can't see it now because it was covered with some kind of lacquer but the wood is all mahogany or certainly the neck and other parts and seeing how beautiful it was having cleaned it up from the garbage, one realized how, it, it, you know, it really made me appreciate how we're throwing things away, throwing beauty away, I should say. And um, that's really been the, the creative impulse in so much of the work that I do, which is around um, the cli climate crisis, as it now is. Uh, but particularly the creative side of it. I mean, when you think this, <laughs> I don't know what's happened to this thing. Um, when you think that this came from it, recycling, okay, but recycling is kind of gloomy sounding. But this is so creative. And I was just thinking the other day, we have a climate crisis, and that means we have a climate creativity. We have to be creative because, you know, otherwise we're going over the edge. So this is a perfect example of that. Okay, so that's another little sermon over. Let's do another song. <laughs> oh, um, this is really an interesting song. It's the current top of the pops, revolutionary pops in Nicaragua, and it's called Soberanía, which means sovereignty. And it's particularly interesting in that it's really about Sandino, the military leader whose uh, main claim to fame was that was he ran a guerrilla guerrilla how do you say guerrilla war uh, war against the marines in Nicaragua who had invaded several times I can't remember how many but then that's part of the course so we don't need to count up too much um, and he is credited with you know at the end they got fed up and took themselves off and. Uh, uh, what's fascinating about him is that um, he is celebrated here, of course, as a military hero, and that, in that sense, he was. He was kind of like a Che Guevara of his era. Uh, we're talking the late 20s and the early 30s here. Um, 
But what is most interesting about San Dino, from my point of view, is that most military leaders, like, for example, you know, um, Eisenhower, he's the one that comes to mind, they're, they're generals and then they go on for president. And San Dino didn't do that, and it was quite remarkable. What he did was to retire to the countryside, not retire in the sense of giving up, in the sense of taking himself off to the countryside, in the center of Nicaragua, which is called a little place called Wiwili, where he had already um, established a community, a cooperative community with, for those days, quite remarkable, um, men and women equal, gender equality, uh, no money, living off the land, education for all, health care for all. It was quite something. And that was his goal for Nicaraguan um, for the organization of society. And so I, I, if I were Chuck Berry, I would rewrite um, Rollo with Beethoven, and I would be singing Rollo with Guevara, because where Che was the revolutionary of the last century with his AK-47 or whatever he had, and you know the, the armed struggle and so on, Sandino, with his peace-filled, land-based, gender-equal, rights for everybody, cooperative, is exactly the model we need for the entire planet if we're going to survive. So having said all of that, the song is actually quite, um, what should we say, uh, it's quite militant, but um, it does celebrate Sandino, and I'm trying to work on how we can get it to celebrate that side of Sandino, which is in fact the most important side in terms of the world today. Um, it, so it's called Soberania. And you have to imagine, you have to imagine in the mountains, Sandino fought from the mountains. He was a guerrillero of the mountains. And so there's this echo in the mountains. Sandino. 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 Nicaragua is sovereign, sovereign land of Sandino. It's written large throughout our history, in pure blood and not ink for printing. And I hear again unbidden the proud words of the general, hero of La Segovia. Our sovereignty knows no discussion. We will die defending it. No brook, no interference, no foreign manipulation. For how can a stranger speak to the heart of a Nicaraguan? Afuera, go home, go blow off your hot air. But if you're here in my homeland, you respect our bondage. Blanco, that no foreign star is staining, just as Andres Castro stone spoke, a dignity proclaiming. In Nicaragua, most ambassadors respect diplomatic order. Simply scorn it. One gentleman in particular, filled with blind arrogance, prime export of the gringos, born of La Casa Blanca. So if you want to speak, sir, come give up your accreditation. And you'll soon see how short your stay is, how soon you'll be deported. Not talking war here, just saying loud and clear. It's your right to go on yapping, but afuera. Go home, go blow off your hot air. But if you're here in Nicaragua, you respect a bandera. A proud flag azul blanco, unstained by foreign stars. 
since that one glorious day suddenly in unfurled La Roja Negra All right. <laughs> I love the line. Filled with blind arrogance, prime export of the gringos. That's, I, I, this is my translation, I have to say. I have to take responsibility when they come for us. That's the guy who wrote it. But it, it's just quite a good song. And um, it, it, I've actually made a recording of it in, with the Lassie, um, Maria Alfonsina, and the, um, what are they called, the Rusticos del Norte. They made a super recording of it, and then we interweave the Spanish with the English. Um, she's not here, and you know it's a very different kettle of fish when she does, of course, in Spanish. Um, so that was one, and then I thought maybe uh, the great Nicaraguan, uh, the great Ni Victor Jara song. Well, there are so many, but the great one, which is so good for singing together, and again in Spanish and English, and. Uh, it's called Ni Chicha Ni Limonada, and uh, it's hard, to, well, it's not hard to translate, it's hard, it basically means, literally means, neither chicha, which is a fermented um, corn. corn drink, yeah, and um, very, it's like moonshine whiskey, that, um, yeah, kind of hooch, and uh, so strong, and then on the other hand, you have limonada, so you need chicha, ni limonada, you're neither uh, hooch, ni lemon, nor lemonade, so you're neither fish nor fowl, you're just sitting on the fence. And that's what he says. He says, you're sitting on the fence playing with yourselves. Come on, get over here where the spuds are burning. And uh, the famous uh, chorus is, so he's saying, oh, you, oh, you, you're not real. Get off the damn fence. Yes, you love to sit round and fondle your precious feet to spend something in the donkey. Anyway, so the great thing about this song, I always have to make a point of this song, but it really, it was very offensive to the middle classes of Chile. Uh, particularly the generals and so on. And this is possibly, well, probably one of the songs which really got up their nose. Because he says, as I say, you're sitting on the fence playing with yourselves. And this is really, to me, it's directed at people like me. Because, you know, I come from a very privileged background in middle class England. And um, in Scotland, you know, terrific education and all the rest of it. And I, it's my privilege to be here in Nicaragua and to be trying to give something back, shall we say. And I think he, he's got a wonderful verse. He says, um, bread, shelter, song and friendship for her and him, for me and you. Bread, shelter, song and friendship for her and him, for me and you. That's all we want. That's what justice is. Beauty, tranquility, having a dignified life together. And he, he is such a classic, it's such a, how do you say, a, a, it's the epitome of what we're looking for. And he puts it so beautifully. Anyway, in the midst of this rather turbulent song, so let's have a go. Um, in Spanish and English. Donde el sol calienta, si usted que estás comprar, anda donde vos reta, en ningún daño le hará estar, donde la papa queman, en ningún daño le hará, la papa queman usted, no es nada, no es chicha ni limona, se lo pasa mal si ando caramba y santo. Su dignidad, usted no es nada, no es chicha ni limona, se lo pasa mano si ando caramba, samba, su dignidad. And it means something like this: Come on, now get yourself over here, get 
over where the sun is shining. Yes, you're always holding back, making sure that your butt is covered. And come on now, come and join us over here where the spuds are burning. Come on now, come and join us over here where the spuds are burning. Oh, you, you're not real. Get off the damn fence. Yes, you love to sit round and fondle your precious Peter Spence. Oh, stand on me, no chicha ni limona. Se lo pasa mano si ando caramba samba su dignidad. Si queremos ma fiestoca, primero hay que trabajar y tendremos patoitos. Abrigo pan y amistad Y si usted no está de acuerdo Es cuestión de usted nomás La cosa va para adelante Y no pienso recular Usted no No es chicha ni limona Se lo pasa manoseando Caramba y samba su dignidad Usted oiga nomás No es chicha ni limona se lo pasa mano se ande caramba y samba su dignidad. And that was this good news. <coughs> so if you want to get down and party first, there's so much to do. Bread, shelter, song and friendship for her and him, for me and you. And if you find that too radical, well, it's up to you, Jack. This baby's going forward, no time for turning back. Oh, you, you're not real. And off the damn fence, yes, you will love to sit round and fondle your precious beaded bed. Oh, you, you're not real. Get off the damn fence, yes, you will love to sit round and fondle your precious Peter Spence. Usted no es nada, no es chicha ni limona, se lo pasa mano si anda caramba samba su dignidad. Que viva Victor Jara!